Hello everyone, and welcome to another Company of Heroes 2 replay cast. My name is ATR, and today we're going to have a 1v1 on Samoski Winter. Yes, once again, Samoski Winter, this is still from the Sunday Night Fights Season 5 Tournament, Qualifier 3, Round of 16. This time around, our heroes are going to be Marcus, 2389, very uh, famous <laughs> player here in Company of Heroes 2. And he has actually co-hosted uh, Sunday Night Fights as well, so uh, he was a little bit busy, I guess, in this uh, round this time. Uh, he is going to be playing against Once Ober, who is playing as the Soviets for the Red Army. Marcus, of course, being the Germans. So while we kick it, kick it off here, let's take a look at our players. Like we said, Marcus is a very famous streamer, very famous member of the community. He is very high up there. He, mm, well, I guess you could say his Soviet play is stronger, but, you know, regardless, he's still pretty pretty freaking good. Uh, his uh, German rank is currently ranked 94, which is the important one for this matchup. And his opponent, once over, is ranked uh, 48th for the Soviets. So in this matchup, uh, once over actually, you know, outranks him. So might be an interesting fight. We'll see. We'll see how it turns out. Uh, so I suppose enough of that. Let's take a look at the game and see what we can see. And what we can see isn't really anything out of the ordinary. We see once over, Soviet player getting conscripts, three conscripts out right now, probably uh, getting Molotovs right now. And then we have Marcus going for tier one as a German player and getting Grenadiers out of that. Now he did go for the interesting play of getting a uh, second Pioneer squad. Um, but, well, it's two pilots and two, three Grenadiers. Molotovs already researched for once over, like we assumed. And the Grenadiers and Conscripts are duking it out in the Northern Fuel. So, the Grenadiers will probably win this fight, considering that the uh, Molotov was whiffed. But now, with the addition of a second Conscript squad, these Grenadiers are in trouble. However, there is a Pioneer squad coming up behind these Conscripts to support, and a second Grand squad being used to support in the fight as well. So, in this situation, the Germans are going to win this fight. There's no additional reinforcements coming to this side of the map for once over, but a very nice Molotov right on top of both Grenadier squads burns alive one of the Grants on the already injured squad, bringing it down to two men, forcing the retreat. Down to two men on the retreat. Four men left still on this Grenadier squad, and the Pios only lose one man and force away the other Conscript squad down to two men themselves. So very nice, like I said. Wasn't an easy fight, but the Germans will end up winning this fight hands down. So Grants losing one man, Conscript still at five, now down to four. And the Grants and Pios combined are just slaughtering them. Molotov landing on the Grants, doing a lot of damage. They're standing on the flames, taking quite a bit of punishment. Get themselves behind the Conscript, and the Conscript end up retreating. Pios, the last ones left on the field, and they stay alive, although they're running through the fire. Not the brightest idea on those Pios, but there they go. Along their way, they don't even need to cap the point since Marcus has already capped it. And victory. So fourth Grand Squad on the field now for Marcus, uh, fourth Conscript Squad as well on the field for once over. Aside from that extra Pioneer, uh, they are almost one for one. Right hand side, Pios and Combat Engineers dancing around each other. The Combat Engineers decide to move away and are probably going to go capture the center, which only gives them one strategic point, so not that big a deal. Conscripts are moving over to the right hand side against those Pios. The Pios did manage to capture the victory point, so they will probably end up just retreating in the face of these Conscripts and a lot of them capture the, po the point after a while. In front of the base, the combat engineers capturing the strategic point for Marcus, and Marcus is pushing out with three Grenadier squads. One of them not fully reinforced, left at three, so a little bit too over-eager there with that Grenadier squad, but, well, uh, you know, you gotta admire the, uh, the courage of the men in that army. Combat engineers jump into the house simply to delay, and we have three squads shooting at them while a Grenadier squad also shoots from the other side. Conscripts moving into the center to support. We have on the far left a Pioneer squad at two men, just capturing territory. Already finished capturing territory, not doing much else. Grenadier squad retreating down to three men, and center map being captured by Marcus while those combat engineers are still being quite annoying. We see a retreat from the Pios and the Grenadier squad that was down to three men, so only one Grenadier squad remains on the field that was right here in the front of the base, while the other Grenadier squad in the center continues to move on to both survey and capture territory. So, so far, pretty dead even tech-wise. We do see Marcus already teching up Tier 2. Probably going to get himself a half-track for Tier 2, considering the amount of Grants and Pios as well. But, one shouldn't assume. It is what I think he's going to do, however. 
So, nothing really happening so far. We see Grants capturing the southern port and going for that fuel. Concrete squad moving in to intercept. There's a second Grant squad nearby that can help out. And we have a combat engineer squad moving up to tap the strategic point, laying down a mine at the same time. So, very nice there for once over. Grenadiers decide to abandon the fuel point since the conscripts, you know, got themselves on the point, denying the ability to cap it. Jump into the house and jump out of the back door when a Molotov gets tossed inside. And now with the second Grenadier squad coming up for support, those conscripts are going to be in a little bit of trouble. The Grants are moving through the back door and they're going to pop through those windows and start shooting at the conscripts. They're going to take some damage to the fire, but not a lot. Grenadier squad to the front, now down to two men, down to one. Wow, taking quite a beating in the volley from those conscripts. And these conscripts at Veterancy 2 are just slaughtering everything. They get 40% accuracy at Veterancy 2, meaning this course DPS goes up. Nice Molotov in the house, forcing those Grants to retreat. So two Grant squads off of the field. One actually gets executed by a vanilla conscript squad. Well, actually, no, it looks like it might have been... No, it got executed by this guy. Yeah, these guys don't even have a kill. So yeah, this Veteran C2 squad just continues to roll and kills the retreating one-man Grenadier squad while the two-man squad makes it out alive. So unfortunate there for Marcus. He does lose one of his combat infantry, but with the half track now on the field, he should be able to push out the Soviet infantry. Also getting a flamethrower upgrade, but there is a mine right there. The pilots are going to run straight into the mine. A little bit of a lucky move there for Marcus. The half track was not the one who had the mine, and they can reinforce on the field, although considering that there's constant spots right on top of them, those pilots will have to retreat as the half track backs off, backpedals in the face of the conscript. The conscript do get in range and will throw two 18As on top of the half track. Killing the gunner on top, denying the ability of the half track to support on the fight. Still backs off, gets that flamethrower upgrade, and goes to town on the costume squad, instantly torching three of those members. Wow, that was a lot of damage from that initial burst. And the two-man costume squad decides to stay on the field and decap the point, and finally retreating. Base sector MG rips through that conscript squad, getting it suppressed and killing two of its men. The pioneers never look so intimidating with the defense of a bunker on top of them. And the Conscripts are crawling, trying to get themselves in the house. They will be able to get themselves into the house, but there is a flamethrower ha half track nearby that can just simply torch them out. Pios decide to beat them to it and jump themselves into the house and are now just shooting the men that are currently crawling on the floor in front of that house. Grandiers move into range and are now able to shoot at the Conscripts as well. Conscripts do throw a Molotov into the house, but decide to retreat. We are going to have to retreat through the base sector MG fire once again. Only a little bit of fire, so not that much. They are four men, so they're very healthy and should be able to make it out of life. Grandiers do capture the point and continue to push forward. Probably going to jump into the house, and we now have guard rifles on the field for once over. He selected his doctrine, and that is the guard rifle combined arms tactics. So we'll see PPS agents equipped on those conscripts as well. Back at base, we see tier two down for uh, once over, but that is just a stepping stone for uh, tier three. He wants to have the ability to get AT guns later on but wants to get either a T-34 or T-70 out relatively soon, so very nice. Panzer Grenadier is now on the field for Marcus. Those are going to rip those uh, guard rifles to shreds. They're currently just on the field, so they're going to take a little while to get. And up in the north, we see some Grenadiers engaging conscripts in that house up in the north, taking some damage, and a Grand Squad moving to the far left to capture that munitions point. Center map, the guard's rifle decide to retreat in the face of the Grenz and the half-track. The half-track pushes forward very aggressively, and the Grenz uh, are setting up in the center just to capture that victory point. More Grenz squads and Pios just pouring out of the base. Those are actually just Pios, so no Grenz. And up in the northern fuel, we have Grenadier squads moving in to stop that cap, while Panzer Grenadiers move in for the flank with the half-track as well. The half-track moves in for a burst. Doesn't do a lot of damage, but it is holding back that conscript squad, conscript squad as it retreats. Panzer Grenadiers being able to get a lot of shots in with their Storm Gewehr rifles, and the half-track is now pursuing the conscript squad. Can he finish it off? He might be able to. Very low health, down to two men. One more burst should potentially finish them off risk of a mine right there is very high, but Marcus decides to floor it, and can he get that last conscript? One more burst, and there it goes. Very nice. Marcus gets himself a whole conscript squad, and that evens up things as far as the infantry front goes. So. Pack gun getting produced for Marcus, anticipating some type of armor, and we do see a T-70 getting produced for once over. Pack gun not the best against the T-70s, but it is capable of doing some decent amount of damage. Grenadier squad gets eliminated up north, quite unfortunately for uh, Marcus. Tries to kill off the veterans to two conscript squad, but only ends up getting an 18 8 on the half track. The half track now needs to get itself out of there because we see guard rifles moving in that direction, and they can do very quick work 
of a half track pioneers are rushing to the left hand side to try to get the repairs off second pioneer squad is over on the far right side so it cannot support it and the guards are just setting up and firing at the pios as they move to the north half track continues to backpedal back off and now actually moves forward to try to support the pios can he do enough damage to push him off of the field and deny those ptrs rifles we now see uh fortified armor doctrine getting selected for markers that means he gets that panzer technician smoke so that is probably why he selected that. Whoa, nice rifle made there by those guards. Ends up getting those guard rifles, I mean from the Grenadiers, ends up hitting the guards, getting them down to one man, barely makes it out. No drip, no weapon drop, however, but the T-70 makes itself known, takes some pot shots at the infantry and backs off. Grenadiers shifting position to be in between the T-70 and the half-track. He doesn't want to lose his half-track to this T-70. T-70 continues to rip the threads. Those threads are going to push forward. Can they get themselves in the range of a Panzerfaust? They do not and end up having to retreat. The half-track is now completely exposed, trying to get repaired by the piles, but I think the T-70 will be able to get right on top of them. Uh, conscripts as well getting themselves better in C-3, moving on top of the half-track to throw another 18 at it almost solidifying the fact that it's gonna die. The Pioneers are trying as hard as they can to repair it, but with the T-70 falling on top of the half-track, that half-track is done for. So a shot goes off, actually killing two of the Pioneers in one shot. Pioneers continue to reinforce. Don't manage to get any additional repair stops and are now retreating down to two men. Can the T-70 chase them down? It looks like he will not even try to do so. Take some pot shots as they run, but that is about it. Back at base, we see no medic bunker for Marcus, so his units do end up coming back onto the field injured. Grenadiers got down to one man, retreating through combat engineers, but the combat engineers are not the best shooters and end up missing that squad opportunity. T-70 now running into the Panzer Grenadiers. The Panzer Grenadiers are down to two men, need to retreat. There they go, but the Panzer T-70 is going to chase them. No mines in the way to stop that T-70. The T-70 now actually stops one of the Panzer Grenadiers, shoots the one in front, and the pack gun takes a nice shot at the C-70. Can he finish it off? Second shot from the pack gun misses. Or well, is not able to go through because of the arc of fire. Panzer Grenadier squad goes down. Faust goes off on the T-70. And gets a crit. Well, yeah, gets the engine crit, obviously. Uh, engine damage is just standard. The pack gun is now trying to move up to catch that T-70. Can he finish it off? If he doesn't, that is going to be a lot of damage for Marcus, considering he lost his Panzer Grenadier squad. Conscript squad getting replaced for once over. We see the center currently getting capped by once over. And Marcus focusing over here on the north, just trying to catch that T-70. T-70 with the damage engine is still able to run away, but the Grenadiers might be able to catch up to it and throw another Faust, which is what they're trying to do. Getting 40% accuracy, taking some shots with their rifles at the T-70. The T-70 notices him and chasing them and turns his turret around to shoot. The Grenadiers decide to stop in the phase of the T-70 and take some shots. Now only running. Pack on finally sets up in a nice angle, takes a shot at the T-70 and eliminates it. So, at the very least, it was about an even trade. Not exactly, but, you know, could have been worse. If that T-70 had made it alive, it would have been very bad news for Marcus, considering the amount of damage that the T-70 did. It took out the half-track and a Panzer Grenadier squad. The so, at the very least, he took out the T-70 on. and doesn't have to deal with the uh, veterans he that it would have probably acquired. So, left-hand side, we see uh, Soviet infantry just flooding the territory, guards the capturing the north. Guards are actually being used now to capture because there's no vehicles on the field that they can really deal against. So, they're, you know, they are strong infantry, obviously. They can go go toe-to-toe -to -toe on a firefight, but, you know, PPSH and put conscripts especially better. T-31s are far better on the front lines at this point in the game. So, T-34 getting produced for once over. It's about to hit the field. Should be popping in the... Uh, road right now and pop no I mean pop wait there we go pop <laughs> so T-34 on the field this gives once over a very nice momentum swing he's gonna start pushing on Marcus Marcus really only has the pack gun and uh, Faust to go by he has a Panzer Grenadier squad on the field once again that he produced and could potentially get tricks on them but he does not have anywhere near enough munitions to be able to produce that those are 120 munitions and he barely has 20 munitions himself so yeah, that's going to be a long way off before those treks get upgraded, if they get upgraded at all. So we see German infantry pushing over on the left-hand side, northern side, I guess you could say. Grenadiers, uh, pioneers with flamethrowers, and uh, the guard rifles up north. Taking some shots at the infantry as they approach, forcing them away. Those were piles. They're now down to two men. But the entire center map and the right-hand side is currently open to one over, which is taking this opportunity to capture it completely. Marcus focusing on this side because he can guarantee almost completely that he can get himself a fuel point that this way. And so 
start. In a way, teching up. So T-34 pushes up and starts taking some shots at the Panzer Grenadiers that are currently traversing the ice. Very uh, risky maneuver there by the Panzer Grenadiers. Could get <laughs> sunk into the ice. Pack gun sets up, takes a shot at the T-34. Second shot goes off, kills, hits it, and brings it down to about 50% health. We now see a command tank getting produced for Marcus, so no need for him to get his, uh, you know, tier three. He's just going to get his, his own Panzer IV in the form of a command tank. Not the same, you know, damage values and such, but you know, pretty similar. You can kind of compare them. So uh, Panzer Grenadiers and conscripts engaging in the center of the ice. Down to two men, the conscripts decide to retreat. Down to one man on the retreat, but the Panzer Grenadiers retreat as well, not wanting to risk it. And the Panzer IV is moving over to the left-hand side north just to be able to, well, uh, get some support by the pack gun, which is nice. It's, uh, it's, a, it's an awesome choice. Keep in mind the command tank is 125 fuel, so it costs you 10 more fuel than the standard uh, Panzer IV. However, you don't have to build, you know, your tier 3 than you otherwise would have, so in this situation it is a cheap rock. And there's the right option, it doesn't have a lot of fuel, so there it is. So the guard rifles up in the north captured the point, c cutting off the fuel from uh, the base uh, to Marcus. But the Panzer IV moves in and takes some shot, kills him a little bit. You know, only a couple men die, only about two, and moves into the zone. So once again, remember that the uh, command tank gives a defensive buff. Um, well, is that combat effectiveness? I don't remember exactly what it is, but it should be a defensive buff to units nearby. Well, not nearby, in the same area. You can see the area is highlighted in green there. So, as long as they're in that area, they should be able to do that. Ooh, Grenadier Spot barely making it alive at one man through a Constant Spot. The Constant Spot, however, was brand new. They'd have PPS agents, but they were unexperienced using them, so they're able to, uh... The Grenadiers are able to... The Grenadier member is able to slip by and dodge those shots. Pack on set up to shoot at the T-34. T-34 taking some shots from the pack, but not actually getting hit. 18-8 goes off on the T-30... On the Panzer IV command tank. T-34 now moves to a different angle, trying to shoot the uh, Panzer IV on the side armor and is managing to get so. The pack gun is as well taking some shots at the conscript, which is not the best target for them, but it's having to back off. Now it turns its sights at the T-34. T-34 now getting shot on the side armor, down to about 25% health. Does not finish off the command tank, misses its last shot, and is now going to get itself in a different angle. Molotov landing on the pack gun, forcing it to move once again. The command tank taking some shots at the conscript, down to one man. Veteran C3 conscript about to be taken out. Very risky maneuver, but once over loses his conscript squad at the same time taking down the command tank. So a very hefty prize there for once over to take at this point, considering he now has no veterancy on the field. And uh, while Marcus doesn't have a lot of the field, he does have veterancy, which is quite significant. However, two T34s uh, two T thirty fours on the field for Marcus is more than enough to counter whatever veterancy his units have, considering that the veterancy is only on Grenadiers and Pyos. Remember, Pyo veterancy does not give them any combat or defensive bonuses. The only thing that it does is uh, basically make them repair faster, so that's nice. That is veterancy 2, of course. Veterancy 1, you know, doesn't matter. <laughs> Center map, Panzer Grenadiers is moving since they lost the north to capture victory points. Victory point-wise, it's a pretty even game currently in the, uh, in the favor of once over. We have 273 for Marcus and 394 for once over. Mortar on the field for uh, once over. That is a standard mortar, considering the doctrine, so he can't get the 120 millimeter mortar. But it is, you know, still a mortar, so capable of doing some decent amount of damage. Panzer Grenadiers uh, run to the church, and a nade goes straight into the church and kills one of the Panzer Grenadiers, so not as much damage as it could have been, not as bad. Pack gun gets stolen by once over, and it's currently running through the field back to its side of the, of the, of the base or side of the field. So that is going to be a little bit annoying for Marcus to deal with. So it's going to be very hard for him to do much with a tank. However, he does have the potential elephant tank. That's pretty far away considering the fuel. Panzer Grenadier squad gets wiped out in the center by both uh, grenades, mortars, tank shells, pack guns, everything landing on the church. They get completely annihilated inside and none of them are hurt from again. And the guard rifles are going for the cutoff to deny the right-hand side uh, territories as well. Guards, I mean, Grenadiers capturing the fuel point. And center map, we have a Grenadier squad taking a moth off to the face in that house. Down to two men. It's a veteran C3 squad, so it's a very high-value target. 
and retreats through the ice, barely making it out alive. Up north, pilot is repairing, well not repairing, capturing. And the Panzer Grenadiers are now pushing straight onto the guard rifles. The guard rifles are doing a lot of damage to them, but the three Panzer Grenadiers are now slaughtering the guards point blank range. Two to four men left, but the Panzer Grenadiers are whipping them, and there's a PTRS rifle dropped on the field. The uh, Panzer Grenadiers decide to pick it up themselves, gonna try to capture the point, but with a PPSH conscript and a T-34 moving up on them, the Panzer Grenadiers are probably gonna have to retreat or get killed. They are very close together, so one shot from the T-34 can kill them both. Now they decide to shift position and retreat. Nice shot there by the T-34, nails one of them, but the other one makes it out alive with the PTRS rifle. New pack on for Marcus sets up in the center of the map, takes a shot at the T-34, T-34 stopped and returns fire. Return fire from the pack on brings it down to about 50% health. One more shot will go off before it gets off the range, but he misses and the T-34 stays alive. Maxim machine gun on the field for once over, now shooting at the Grenadiers on the Southern Fuel. Southern Fuel also getting bombarded by the mortar, so the Grenadiers are going to have to evacuate. Down is coming into that house, very risky maneuver to stay in there considering the mortar. Mortar shot lands, kills one more Grenadier. And that grand dude needs to get the hell out of there or he's gonna die now. And there he goes, gets out of the house, starts retreating. He's gonna have to retreat through a conscript squad. Is the conscript squad gonna be uh, engaged with the other grand squad? That is what we're gonna about to see. The grenadier is running straight through them. Can he finish it off? Molotov landing right in front of the grenadier. The grenadier is running straight through the conscript. Can the conscript finish it off? It looks like no, the conscripts, I mean the Grand Years and Veteran C4 are enough of a threat to these conscripts, even though they're hitting the dirt, that they decide to keep engaging them. So very lucky there for Marcus keeping that Veteran C alive. Up north, Pioneer squad retreating. T-34 tank being used to capture the fuel. Sees the Pios run straight by, but you know, decides he doesn't really care about that. And the uh, Grand capturing the point. Oh, taking a nasty shot there by the Soviet mortar. And down goes two of those friends. Grants jumping into the house. Again, another risky maneuver considering the uh, the mortar in the field. Does a lot of damage to men inside. There was a change with the recent patch. Flamethrowers uh, and mortars do extra damage to units inside of houses. And this is a, uh, meant as a direct counter, those uh, types of units. So Panzer Grenadiers pushing into the center, they're probably going to jump into this house. They do have a PTRS rifle, so they can do actually some damage to the T-34s. It's not going to be overwhelming amounts of damage, all things considered. But, you know, they can actually start flinking away at that armor and combined with something else like a pack gun could potentially get some kills. So the PTRS rifle is actually going off on the center T-34. The pack gun sets up to shoot at the T-34 up in the front. Takes a nasty shot to the side, brings it down to about 75% health. And the Panzer Grenadiers jump out of the house once it starts getting mortared by the Soviets. Down south, Grenadiers just capturing territories. Pioneers there for support with a flamethrower, and the pack on backs off once it's getting shot from its stolen pack on but buddy. Panzer Grenadiers now finally get Panzer Shrek's, so that's gonna help out Marcus quite a bit with the uh well, with the whole armor situation. Third T-34 now on the field for once over. So he has two T-34s up front and a third one over here. Guard rifles still moving along. These guard rifles actually only have one PTRS rifle, but that actually is better for them in this situation considering that there's currently no armor on the field for Marcus. So that means that they have more, you know, standard anti-infantry rifles. We have liberated this sector. Over here on the right-hand side, we hear a small engagement, Pios and Maxim Machine Gun. The Maxim Machine Gun doing quite a bit of damage to the Pios. The Pios get suppressed and are probably going to get pinned down. We see uh, Grenadier Spud moving down south to capture points just to get more income. And we see another command tank getting called in from Marcus. He does actually want to have some type of armor on the field, considering the sheer amount of Soviet armor that is currently present. So he's not going to sit by idly and let him out. Mass up on Armada and roll up on his base, but well, the command tank is the best. Unless I'm mistaken, but I'm pretty sure it doesn't do as much damage against armor as a standard tank or. But well, it is a tank that he can use and call in without having to build anything and utilize his fuel to the maximum, so it is pretty much the only choice right now he has, which is nice. Right hand side, we see the Maxim machine gun finally getting pushed out of this side of the field. Command tank moves in, shoots it, gets one more guy, and the remaining men who actually die to 
all this infantry, giving Marcus a maximum machine gun that he can pick up for his own, so that's very nice. A nice pickup. A little nicer spite. He doesn't have to deal with the maximum machine gun out on the field. The maximum machine gun is not going to do a lot against the Soviet tanks. At the very least, however, it will help him hold positions a little bit better. So command tank heading straight into the center. Guards are there to beat it and have to end up retreating, considering the amount of damage that the uh, command tank does to them right now. The point needs to be captured for the command tank to actually extend the bonuses as far as defensive goes. And the P-34s are now pushing forward in unison. The command tank is now backing off completely. Pack on sets up, takes some shots at the forward P-34. More P-34s continue to push onto the front of the base. We have three going by. Unchecked, the P-34 on the spearhead actually ends up dying. A little bit of a sloppy maneuver there for once over. The other three P-34s did not go for the push and ended up not being able to kill anything. We see a uh, thermal wick uh, barrage getting called in for once over. Doing some damage. The uh, pack gun is now going to have to move out of the way. He has a little bit of a time before the next volley. And the conscripts end up having to retreat. The T-34, I mean the Panzer IV, I believe will take some damage to the gun from that. I think it does damage armor, but not incredibly. We're going to see it right now, considering it's the only target from this side of the map. Here it comes for another run. There we go. Look at that damage go down. That is actually quite a significant amount of damage. It's about, what? Maybe 25% damage in one barrage. So considering he does not have, um, considering he doesn't have anti, um, oh, oh, he's gonna lose it. That's unfortunate. Not exactly sure what Marcus was waiting for here, but yeah. Now the Grenadiers are gonna be the target of the Sturmelwick, and here comes the barrage run. And this squad is dead. Look at that. Look at look at the barrage. Yeah. Mark is not catching any type of break here. He loses one of his Grenadiers. Veteran to three Grenadiers, if I'm not mistaken. And loses his command tank. So, yeah. I mean, those Thermovic attacks, you have to just get the hell out of there. Unless you have a Flag Panzer or, you know, the Gunners on top of those big tanks that can shoot down uh, planes. Those Thermovic attacks are going to just wreck the entire area. So, you have to vacate it if you want to keep your stuff on the field. And, unfortunately, that Panzer tank ended up dying. T-34 goes in for a drive-by, takes some shots at the infantry and the pack on as it moves, but the pack on does return fire and does quite a bit of damage. It's a veteran C3 uh, pack on, which is pretty good now. Uh, I am not entirely familiar with what the veterans are, so let's uh, let's read on that. It's a pack 40, so at uh, veteran C2, the pack gets plus 30% rotation and minus 30% reload. So it you know turns faster and fires faster essentially. And then at Veteran C3, it gets camouflage netting, so it can cloak now. There it is. Uh, plus 30% penetration and minus 10% reload, so it still shoots even faster. Now has more penetration and it can cloak. So that's pretty beastly. But everything is getting annihilated in the center of the map. Marcus just tossing away infantry for no reason. These Pyos just got sacrificed and they ended up. Losing a flamethrower, which can get picked up by once over quite easily. He does have some constant plus on the field that could also, also pick up a flamethrower, and that would be very nice for them. And it looks like that's what they're going to do. There we go. So, PPS Ages and flamethrower in the conscript squad. I mean, that's just brutal. And, yeah, Marcus is just building himself another pack gun. I'm not entirely sure if Marcus knows about the the, uh, the netting, the, uh, the cloak netting. It is a new addition in the, in the latest, uh, the, um, what do you call it? The, ah, the veterancy changes that happened in one of the uh, more recent patches. So, you know, might not be something you're used to. So the pack guns are just moving up north. There's a maximum machine gun there supporting. The pack gun turns inside to the T-34 that's rushing it. The T-34 takes a shot to the frontal armor. Decides to backpedal, takes another shot down to about 50% health. One more shot goes off, bringing it down to about 25. But the second pack gun is not in position. It's barely coming under the field. And the Panzer Grenadiers with PTRS is also not nearby to do additional damage. So that T-34 backs off, stays alive. Will mask itself probably behind this little shed there and get repairs. In a little while, we have guards down south. We have conscripts capturing points. Do we have any combat engineers? We do have combat engineers for once over, but where are they? Center map? Yeah, they're center map repairing one another tank. So that tank is a little bit out of, out of commission right now. Decides to move itself out of the way and is going to go over to the combat engineers since the combat engineers can't get to it very easily. 
Axe and machine gun that got stolen sets up here on the fuel, and the conscripts are heading at it straight through the angle where it's not aiming. Turns to phase them, and there it goes. Can it get that burst off? Does get a burst off, and the conscripts end up hitting the dirt right in front of it. So they will take a lot of damage. Molotov landing on the Maxim machine gun, burning it alive, forcing the retreat. Down to two men on the retreat. Probably down to one. No. Mortar returning fire on the conscript, doing quite a bit of damage. And the, the pack guns are set up in the center. Taking some shots. The uh, Panzer Grenadiers, nice bundle right in between them, but it's only probably gonna. Ooh, nails three of them. Very nice bundle late, in fact. And the Panzer Grenadier, one man, ends up having to retreat. The pack gun decides to turn around and head back home, all things considered. That is the you know, best choice. And Marcus is just not being able to push into the map. Down to less than 100 points, currently triple capped. And one silver is sitting comfortably in the center of the map with four tanks, where Marcus cannot really do much. So we might be seeing the first loss of the first game being for Marcus. And yes, that is actually it. Looks like Marcus uh, throws in the towel, says, okay, yeah, I lost too many things. I don't have a lot on the field, and considering what he has, that's going to be game. So very nice game there for once over. Both for Marcus, it was pretty well. Uh, so yeah, uh, once again, if you like the game and you like the tournament, go ahead and head over to... Uh, the Facebook page for KOTU.org. The link will be in the description. Uh, leave them a like. Tell them, you know, you appreciate the fact that they're throwing off this tournament, which is very nice for the community. Right? And, uh, and yeah, that's about it. So, once again, I hope you enjoyed the game. If you have any positive or negative remarks, go ahead and leave them in the comment section below. If you have any replays you want to send me, go ahead and send them to the email that I will put in the description. But otherwise, I hope you guys have a great day. Thank you so much for watching. And I will see you next time.